Welcome to 101 East. I'm Steve Chow. Thousands of asylum seekers have risked their lives trying to get to Australia on small rickety boats. To stop them, the country sends these people to detention centers on remote Pacific islands. But that is causing friction with local communities that live there. We should be closing the thing. We should be matching them, telling them, enough. We will not allow this. Inside the detention centers, frustrations have sparked violent and deadly riots. Those being held call it prison. Aaron Fernandez investigates the impact of Australia's secretive detention program. For people fleeing war and persecution, this is the life they perhaps dream of. A sunny day in Australia's largest city, Sydney. But for Egyptian refugee Samar al Zaini, her new life is incomplete. Her brother, who tried to reach Australia, has been sent to a detention centre on an island in the Pacific Ocean. Why are you here handing out these leaflets? To help him, to help my brother. He's going to die over there in Manus Island. Have you tried contacting the Australian government? Oh my God, of course. I try everyone. I sent to Prime Minister, Minister of Immigration. I asked all of them, they didn't answer me. I can't leave my brother to die. I can't. Saman's brother, Faisal, is one of more than 2,000 people seeking asylum that Australia currently holds in detention. But few people stop to hear her plight in the Sydney rush hour. Look, here's my brother. Samar arrived in Australia seven years ago by plane and was granted refugee status. When Faisal tried to come by boat a year ago, he was sent to Manus Island under Australia's hardline policy. The first conversation I had with him, he called me and asked me, what is this place, Samar? They sent me to a very strange place. And people are treating us very badly. What is this? Is this Australia? I told him, no, this is not Australia. This is a place called Papua New Guinea, and I don't know anything about it. While we are filming, Samar receives an unexpected call from her brother inside the detention centre. He tells Samar he's worried about the other asylum seekers inside the camp. For Samar, the call from her brother was more than she could take. The Australian government has a controversial policy of sending all refugees who arrive by boat offshore. If you have a valid claim, you will not be resettled in Australia. You will never live in Australia. Australian Immigration Minister Scott Morrison says he wants to discourage asylum seekers from making dangerous sea journeys to Australian shores. You should know that the government's will will not change on this issue. If they want to put my brother in any detention centre in Australia, it's OK. But bring him to Australia. Don't put him in Papua New Guinea. Don't you have a brother? Don't you have a son? Don't you feel that they're your family? How can you do such a thing? Manus Island is one of the most remote destinations in Asia. It's hard to get to, and because of the refugee detention centre, highly restricted. I am one of just a handful of journalists to come here. This is my second visit to the island. I came a year ago after Australia increased the number of asylum seekers detained here from a few hundred to more than a thousand. I've come back to find out what effect it's having on both the refugees and the local community. <laughs> 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 
Manus Island lies in the Pacific Ocean, three and a half thousand kilometres north of Sydney. Home to more than 60,000 indigenous Melanesians, it's an idyllic tropical haven surrounded by coral reefs. But it's also one of the poorest regions of Papua New Guinea, a country that ranks amongst the least developed in the world. People here live a simple life, fishing and hunting to feed their families. But hosting Australia's detention centre is changing the pace of life on Manus Island. I've lived in Manus all my life. Um, I've worked in Manus all my life also. Since taking office, I've been mayor for almost a year now. Ruth Mandrakamu is known to everyone on Manus as Mama Ruth. She's the mayor of the island's main town, Warringau. But like everyone else, she was caught off guard by the decision to send refugees here. The general scenario at the time was like, we were caught by surprise. We were not ready. And because it was forced on us, we had no choice but to accept the decision. It was never our decision. Initially, she says people here were excited about hosting the refugee processing centre. It came with the promise of job opportunities and increased aid from Australia. We were not only excited, we wanted to see what was really happening. But I can remember from the beginning when um, planes started arriving to Manus with loads of uh, um, transferries, like we were, we, we were not allowed to go to the airport and to this day we, we are not allowed to go into the centre and we don't know what is actually happening there. The local economy has picked up since my last visit. Business is booming, construction sites are appearing all over town and for the first time the island's roads are seeing a steady flow of traffic. We have only one uh, no town, excess block and one plata solia. Tam or something you come here. Maybe let's stand up with our mouth open because maybe let's look more this like something before. Now this love, but it's all in the name of development. But me plant one name. Me plant or come back behind the one year. Me looking. Plant the tennis. Plant the tennis. Yes. Me thinking them all get the line all hamamas no. This like kind change it come up. No, me not think. Me not think. I mean, all people were only come like making business blow all this like, but only hamamas. But for people like us that live in town, and it's really difficult. For many here, the development the Refugee Processing Centre has brought comes with major downsides. Mama Ruth tells me her biggest concern is that the cost of living is now rising. She's supposed to put the price up, increase the price, because no good PMB and me come along and all increase in price. Huh? The boat they made run along and they come. No good price they go on top. She's got no choice but to increase the price of her catch. Prices may have gone up, but the Australian government says it is spending over half a billion dollars to upgrade infrastructure in Papua New Guinea in return for hosting asylum seekers. Manus Island's General Hospital has received new equipment and has been promised an upgrade. It's basically a new hospital with a new, uh, the capacity will be much, much bigger. Uh, Dr Otto Newman says that wouldn't have happened without the detention centre. Now that the processing centre is there and, uh, uh, asylum seekers are uh, coming to use our facilities. We have no option but to upgrade our facilities and I, I have to say that the Australian government has come good in those areas. The hospital facilities are basic. Until now, simple services like blood tests were done manually. New equipment has allowed doctors to see results in just minutes. This hospital will be one of the best in the country, which means that it's going to be a good centre. And with the equipments that are coming, my goodness me, I can see already that the hospital is undergoing you know, very rapid changes also. But even with these improvements, hospital resources are lacking. Asylum seekers treated here often complain about the poor conditions. Basically, some of them are coming from very rich countries and the level of care is very high. And they expect that to be provide the same services for them. At the hospital's dental clinic, a sign says there is no running water. 
Dr. Joanne Baiwa says she often turns asylum seekers away without treatment. I got the filling materials and stuff like that. They all expired, but we still keep them because we can use it for the local patient. But for the local camp, we don't want to do that. Hello, buddy. Because we might get into trouble. <laughs> and they complain a lot, so <laughs> they might report us that we are using more expired materials long so. MX file of 2013 December. It's a local anesthetic. All put the request, lock them. And once all come like here, they refuse treatment. So, like, we just send them back. If they don't want us to see them, we send them back. I leave town and drive towards the detention centre. I want to find out if local communities living in its shadow are benefiting from increased Australian aid. I've arranged to meet village leader George Lokoa and find him by the side of the road. This like I said, middle by round one day you. So George is the local community leader in Mokron and he's just coming out today, taking a day off from his uh, responsibilities. He's calling me to go, so I actually better go. <laughs> like many on Manus Island, George had hoped hosting the detention centre would help the men in his village get jobs and improve their way of life. But those hopes are fading. In the year since the number of refugees arriving to Manus Island increased, he says not much has changed. George tells me later today he is hosting a meeting of disgruntled locals who are demanding the benefits they say they were promised. The meeting draws people from George's village and surrounding areas. Manus Island MP Ronnie Knight is supporting the fight to get a better deal for locals. People are getting more and more frustrated. We have issues now with uh, ships coming in and anchoring on the fishing grounds of these people and uh, then the catch is not as good as it was. The rubbish from the centre is washing up on the beaches. Uh, there's oil in the water, there's oil leaking at Lombrum into the sea. These people are fisher folk, they depend on fish for their livelihood. The thing is, they couldn't do this in Australia. Why are they doing it here? The list of concerns about the detention centre is growing, particularly over jobs. Australia says over a thousand locals are employed, but Ronnie says they are all low-paid positions. Ask them how many of them are supervisory roles, how many of them are you know, managerial roles, how many are working in an office. You will find that most of them are washing dishes, doing laundry, uh, cutting grass, all menial jobs. Yeah, I want to do some work with uh, with uh, with, um, with uh, welfare. Welfare. Okay. Now all the people, women, not all. No, no, no. This is not. You are not qualified for this job. So, Tensions in the community are fast wait. reaching boiling point. We cannot sit down and wait. Now we are too good. These people are here are too good. I think the entire Los Negros and Manus too. You mean you mean good people to us. Oh. We should be. Closing nothing. We should be matching them, telling them, enough! We will not allow this. At the end of the day, the people are the ones that are affected by it, and when the people say enough is enough, they can really destabilize what's going on at Lombor. And if they decide to do what they are thinking of doing, you will find that Manus is not the paradise that most of these expatriates uh, think that it is. The detention centre is only a short boat ride from the village across the harbour but it's strictly off limits. From the water, you can see the facility where more than a thousand detainees live. It's here they undergo background checks before their claims for refugee status can be approved. It looks quiet, revealing little of life inside. But earlier this year, 
the centre exploded into violence. Detainees rioted over two nights, angry at being told they could be held here indefinitely. Police special forces opened fire at the camp. Asylum seekers were dragged from their rooms and beaten by local security guards. Most of the locals employed at the detention centre are too afraid to speak on camera out of fear they'll lose their jobs. But one man has agreed to tell me what he saw that night. We arranged to meet and I agreed to conceal his identity. What do you remember? A guard at the facility, he tells me he understands why the asylum seekers were frustrated. Life inside the camp. The asylum seekers are not being processed within a set time period. Some of them are really frustrated, and you'll see they're psychologically affected because of the waiting. Before the riot broke out, he says he heard asylum seekers chanting for their freedom. That's when we heard the sound of firearms. And while I was still at the compound, I saw someone being carried in a white sheet. I found out later that someone had died. The man who died was 23-year-old Iranian asylum seeker Reza Barati. An inquiry found he died from head injuries and two local workers have been charged with his murder. Since the killing, access to the camp has become even more restricted. But I want to get closer to see the conditions for myself. You must have close to the banis now. We're not stopped and drive through the main gate. Through the window I see shipping containers ringed by high fences where detainees appear to be housed. This is the closed world of a detention camp that Australia has rejected having on its own shores. Groups of asylum seekers exercise while security guards watch on. At the far end of the compound, I see a construction site where new accommodation is being built for Australian workers. But as we continue driving, our camera is spotted and our vehicle stopped. Why you get a camera? Our time at the detention centre is up. It's hard to know what the Australian government plans to do with the thousand detainees being processed on Manus Island. Originally, it said they would be resettled in Papua New Guinea if they were found to be genuine refugees. But signs are starting to emerge that plans may have changed. Rex Gunkuts is a subcontractor who is building a second facility on the island. This site is intended to house refugees before they are released into the community. But Rex says it's been scaled back. From the beginning, it, it was supposed to be a large facility. Uh, and then it, it has been downsized and therefore uh, we have no job available for us. Every time our workmen shows up there, they said, uh, you got no job. Local workers have lost their jobs, and business people like Rex have lost money, creating further uncertainty. This is not an oil or any precious metal project. It's just dealing with uh, human, human beings, right? And any time if Australia wish to you know, change the plan and reset all the refugees elsewhere, uh, the project might come to a standstill. During my stay, I've met many people who have been affected by the detention centre. Locals are happy to accept the money and jobs the facility brings, but it has also brought violence and discontent to island life. I still have many questions about the detention centre and the fate of asylum seekers being held inside. I've come to the capital of Papua New Guinea, Port Moresby. This is where plans to resettle refugees are being made. 
Well, you're not a settlement. You're not a village. But you're a community. Dame Carol Kiddu is a former parliamentarian who leads a team looking into plans to resettle refugees across Papua New Guinea. But locals are against the move and she says consultations were volatile. People were not happy about the policy. They were not comfortable. They were quite happy for people to be processed here. But, um, you know, the idea of resettling people here when they can't provide the services for their own people, you know, that was their concern. Papua New Guinea already has problems providing employment and housing for its own residents. People from rural areas are moving en masse to urban centres and end up living in squalid conditions. We always say this is like a refugee camp. Oh, it's like a refugee camp, our own people who are being moved up. Squatters here have been relocated from illegal settlements. It's a struggle for them to access clean water, electricity and permanent housing. This is why very few refugees held on Manus Island want to be resettled in Papua New Guinea. There was a small number of people under 30. Yeah, I can't remember the exact number. Despite the challenges, the governor of Port Moresby says the country can make resettlement work. Powers Parkop is a former human rights lawyer. He believes introducing refugees here can help solve some of Papua New Guinea's problems. Why should we allow them to languish in those detention centres when they can be useful to our country and our people? Right now we have uh, needs for teachers in the, you know, the schools and the learning institution. I'm sure there are people there who, while waiting for their future, we should be utilising them now. He's urging the government to not only resettle the refugees here, but to close the Manus Island Detention Centre and allow asylum seekers to live in the community. And, and the people now incarcerated in the detention centres in Manus, they're under crime, uh, I don't know if you call it a crime, is that they just want a, a better life and uh, an opportunity to you know, prosper in their life. They haven't committed any wrongs against the state or against the people of Papua New Guinea. Uh, so it's not our law to detain such people. But in the year since Australia announced its policy, not a single refugee has been resettled. More than 400 asylum seekers instead accepted thousands of dollars from the Australian government to leave the detention centre and return home. Australia's detention policy appears to be working. The number of asylum seekers arriving in Australia by boat has slowed dramatically, according to government figures. The Australian Immigration Minister refused to be interviewed for this program, but recently he signed another agreement, this time with Cambodia, to begin settling refugees there in exchange for a reported 35 million US dollars in aid. Meanwhile, the human cost continues to rise. In September, 24-year-old Iranian Hamid Kazai died, reportedly from an infection after cutting his foot inside the Manus Island detention centre. My brother told me the treatment is very bad. People are getting sick and left to die. The evidence is strong. People have died. For Samar, thoughts of her brother in detention never leave her. Put yourself in the same position as those living in the detention centre there. It must be closed. Manus Island must be closed. Sending refugees to a remote island is an experiment in how to confront a growing international problem. With more people fleeing war and poverty, nations everywhere are trying to find ways to stem the tide of refugees. But those trapped in the misery of prolonged detention face an uncertain wait for their new lives to begin. <laughs>